my next guest is someone who is so special and so dear to my heart and you know her because we met in person for the very first time on this show almost exactly six years ago. It's crazy to think about the fact that Karen Glasser and I had been connected through social media but had never met in person. And when we had her on Good Day the first time, we she had just moved to Southern California from Napa. And we were talking about her new program called The Little White Lie. She and I had been going through the process of going gray in very different ways. And when we first got together in person, it was like two kindred spirits. Where have you been all my life? So let me bring on Karen Glasser. Thank you so much for being back here. <laughs> I'm delighted. And wow, six years. Isn't that craziness? It is. It is crazy. Scary. I mean, number one, it speaks to how long Good Day has been going and how right. much we've and I love bringing guests back because over the time, so much has happened. And to listen to all of us just kind of, you know, catch up and, right. and see where we've gone, opening new opportunities. I mean, you in particular, right? I know that your own mantra is, you know, put a mic in my hand and you've got a show in the making. <laughs> I do. I do. That is true. I'm not sure that's a good thing these days or a bad thing. But it is truly my thing. <laughs> well, and that's all it needs to be. There are no judgments right. or bad. If right. it, you know, I remember so well you talking about your musical background, which I know you'll share with us, and then your geeky background and the fact that you have found a way to merge the two mm -hmm. has been extraordinary. So give us a little backstory and tell us what you're doing now. Well, since the last time we were together, a lot of things have changed, not just the world, and the country, but a lot of things have changed personally for me. I actually moved from San Diego to Palm Desert. I am now in a 55 plus community and I, I, you know, I love it. I'm 67 years old and people laugh when they hear I'm in a 55 plus community, but it's great. It's great. Lots of activities, but my business has changed. Life has changed. When the pandemic rolled around, I created a new show for parents and their children called Once Upon a Storytime. And it was so much fun, but it was only meant to be like an eight month thing. And we did it for eight months. We brought in authors and they read their stories and it gave parents a respite from, you know, being with their kids all day long. And we had 800,000 views in the first eight months. It was, oh it was crazy. It was crazy. And I decided to step away while it was going good. <laughs> and I did, I totally did. But Yes, exactly. So, you know, and since then, we've I've created a lot of different new shows. We have a new show called Minding Your Mental Health, because mental health is such an important uh, challenge in these days. I don't think I know anybody that doesn't suffer in some way. Um, and I started a 55 plus lifestyle podcast and a new business podcast. I can't I seem to keep going and going and going for these shows, but I've also jumped into new technology. So wherever you want to go with this conversation, we can. <laughs> Absolutely. So I do want to go back to the fact that, you know, you've had so many twists and turns performing. Yes. Now you're a podcast maven. As you mentioned, you do, you've done a lot of stuff with kids. I know you were um, signed with Rhino Records. You performed yes. at Carnegie Hall, yes. children's yes. songs. I don't think anybody ever thought about children's songs being performed at Carnegie Hall. I know. Isn't that bizarre? Well, you know, it's what's funny is that Rhino Records was really good with, you know, dead people. Literally, they did retrospectives of artists who were no longer with us. And then they jumped into the kids music industry and really weren't sure what to do with us. And so they put us out on the road. I went to, you know, where kids were. I went to zoos and um, malls and then finally ended up at Carnegie Hall, which was so cool. Um, I don't think I realized how cool it was then. But now when people say you were at Carnegie Hall, I realize how cool that must sound. And I guess it was. I guess it really was cool. Um, and, you know, of course, see, how do you get there? Well, practice, practice, practice. But that <laughs> actually wasn't actually how I got there. I think, you know, they were doing a kid's thing. I think what it really means is, is that um, children are, are our future. And Carnegie Hall was way ahead of their time to bring in children's artists to actually do that. I don't think they've done it since, but. I have no idea. And as a native, well, 
I consider myself a native New Yorker because I've lived there longer than anywhere else. But playing Carnegie Hall is cool, no matter who you are and no matter yeah. when you do it. And I don't care if you're five years old and you're doing your kindergarten. Right. <laughs> but if you can say you performed at Carnegie Hall, it's cool. Yeah. And then you went on to be a cantor at a I did. LA synagogue. So singing, performing, stage, yeah. I mean, all of that makes so much sense. It also speaks so much to your person because you are publicly available and open to be, as we talked about on the last show, and I do want to bring some of that conversation back. Mm -hmm. It was so cool. When you and I were going gray, I was stripping it out and cover, you know, and bringing in the silver wash, and I was not prepared to go on camera inch <laughs> by inch. You, on the other hand, tell us how yeah. you did. <laughs> well, you know, I had been coloring my hair since I was 30. And when I turned 60, I said, you know what? I talk about being authentic. I talk about showing up as the real you. And I'm not because every two weeks I was having my hair colored because my mother went gray when she was 30 and my hair started to turn. So when I turned 60, I decided, OK, I better do it now. And then realized I'm on camera all the time. How am I going to do this? It was like, was that really a good decision? I went out and bought hats. I think I talked about that. I put hats on and then I'm sitting in my studio in side wearing hats that looked ridiculous. And I thought, OK, I'm going for it. Little White Lie was born and we brought guests on. You were on and I would do the reveal. I would literally every show once a week say, OK, here's the reveal. I put my head down and you watched my hair grow out. It was like an ombre thing. It was really cool, actually. Um, it was people, a good cool. Yeah, it was. And people would say, how do you do that? And I say, I'm old. That's, I would say I'm old. That's how I did it. But I wish I had done it earlier. I don't know about you. Had, do you wish you had done this earlier? So I I tried to do it earlier. And I think this is one of those conversations where you don't know what you're going to get until you've got it. Like certain right. things you have to commit to for a certain amount of time, right. unless you go out and get a wig or, you know, hair is just that way. It takes time. Right. And right. I had, being in the styling and image business, I had right. hairstylists right. across right. the world that I worked with. And every time I would say to them, I'm coloring my hair every other week. Now my mother started going gray at 15. So think about that. I had been highlighting since I was 23. And then wow. by the time I was 40, I was coloring every three weeks. Yeah. And it would be every other week. Yeah. So it was just a lot. And I don't care how the chemical process became healthier or less disastrous to your hair. And it was beautiful, though. I was always the girl with the hair. Right, and right. I had the stylist who kept me looking fabulous. And when I would say to them, I think I'd like to go gray, they're like, no, no, you're crazy. <laughs> the reason I did it was because one morning I was booked minute to minute, and I was starting my day in my stylist chair to cover the gray, and he got sick. Oh. And he didn't show up because I was due at the studio to record Good Day two hours later. Wow. And show up and I could feel the tears streaming down my face. And I thought to myself, this is ridiculous. I am better than this. I teach people to do this. How can I, you know, be going through this? So I literally, I left, um, I went to dry bar, had them do the blow dry and they covered me up with some powder, right. shot the show. A week or so later, when I saw my stylist, he was back in gear. I said, we're taking it all out. I'm not doing this ever again. I'm done. Yeah. And so it was no longer, what do you think? It's how do I want to live my life? Right. right. And I think that's what it comes to. You have to, you eventually have to make the decision, not your hairdresser, not anyone else. It has to come. And up. I think, you know, hair is a really big decision that a lot of men mm -hmm. and women make. I mean, everybody c colors their hair now. It's not... Yeah. It's not gender specific. And some people go crazy, wild, fun, you know, right. in purple or rainbow or whatever. Yeah. But that wasn't me. And no. I don't think that was you. No, no. <laughs> so the only time I've had purple hair was if I accidentally used a blue shampoo. That right, the purple me. shampoo, which apparently is supposed to work. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it does, but with, with care. Right. And so... But that brings me back to the conversation about vulnerability and the willing to willingness to talk about things right. as they happen. And as I follow your career, 
and what you've been doing, um, you know, not just in the 55 plus, because right. Good Day is also a 55 plus community right. and and loving it and living our most vital, incredible lives. But we are all reinventing ourselves yes. all the time. Yes. And I recently had the opportunity to interview uh, Helen Hunt, the actor, and that she just turned 60. Huh. And so that's also, you know, the conversation of reimagining yourself at every age. As right. I watch you go through this and create opportunities for these big conversations for people of every age mm -hmm. and keeping yourself relevant throughout all of this, that's the part that that really drives me to say, Karen, come back and talk about these shows because yeah. they are so important. What you're doing is opening global conversations. You know, thank you for that. Um, I, and in this last six years, as we said, life has changed and it's also changed how I show up. It's changed the projects I choose to take on. It take, you know, everything has changed. And I am, and as I've gotten older, I've also decided I only want to do those things that bring me joy. I, uh, you know, I'm very blessed. I don't have to work. I want to work. I want my, I want what I do to, to have value. And so I show up every single day, hoping that I can help somebody. And especially, you know, it's, I'm not just in the 55 plus, you know, and I, I know that. And there are women in their forties that, that are, their hair is turning. It is, it is, I mean, I see what's happening in this space right now. There are so many women, thank goodness, that have said, I'm going to show up as me. And I feel like I was a part of the beginning of that. You know, I was, I feel like I was a part of the beginning of that. And so if I did that, yay me, you know, yay me. And I'm happy for these people that are showing up now with not just, and again, I've always said, if you don't want gray hair, don't have gray hair. If you if you want to have want to color your hair, color your hair. But do what you do what you want to do because you want to do it, not because the media tells you to do it or somebody else tells you to do it. And so all these shoes that have launched has been around that as well, specifically mental health. And I think also for women in this pocket, mental health also is a big thing because we're being told ages ageism is like you know rampant. We're being told we're not good enough. Uh, we we look old. Uh, you think you look better with gray hair. You don't. I mean, it's that kind of stuff. And how can I help allow people to show up with the confidence? Because it's all about confidence. Yes, it absolutely is. And on the topic of mental health, since yeah. you and I have had this conversation mm -hmm. that we both had our own experience with it. And I know we're going to be talking about this more on your show coming yes. up. When yes. is that? A couple of weeks, I think. A couple, couple of weeks, weeks. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'll post that information also for our viewers right. if they want to catch up with your show, right. because the the show Minding Your Mental Health right. is getting accolades for helping break the stigma yes. around the conversations of mental health. And I I really believe that at every age, that conversation needs to be brought back yes. and made okay. It needs to be normalized and understood that hard times are hard times. Yes. And sometimes we need to talk about it and other yes. times we need to do more. Yes. I mean, and, you know, we have some similar situations and experiences that are going on in our world as it is too with aging parents and being caregivers and, and, and that also affects mental health. Because it does. I mean, I can't, I mean, I can make reasons up, but it does. I mean, you, I'm sure you have your own experiences that you can talk about, but for me, and look, I'm the, I'm now interviewing you. I'll pull back. <laughs> I can't help myself. Um, Go ahead. No, you know, as, as somebody who's a caretaker, uh, a caregiver, uh, my husband has been ill. Uh, I take care of my parents, my parents as well. It changes how you show up. And so everything, the mental health shows are all about stuff like that. It's everything about that. I, I just feel, I feel so, I think it's so important that we talk about it. Yeah. We don't talk and about it. In it a big role for the last year plus, especially, I mean, more actually for the last four years, right? I, I moved east I, to take care of my yeah, family. COVID. Huge stayed because my mother was not doing well. And then of course, uh, about a little over a year ago, she had a stroke. 
Then she had a medically induced overdose accidental that we thought we lost her. Then she tripped over her cane and landed on her head and we had a head trauma. I mean, it was a year. Yeah. It was a year. And you're right. It's not about excuses. It's not about um, trying to understand what you're going through. It's literally about going day to day, one day at a time yeah. and understanding that life is filled with things that we can't plan for. Right. And I believe like you have showing up with love, showing up yeah. uh, where you can make a difference for people starts at home. It and does. Then, and then you bring it to the world. <laughs> it does. Um, and, you know, I have things that I do to keep myself healthy and sane. You know, I meditate and I'm, I'm big music. Obviously, we do music, but I have classical music playing all day long to keep me sane so that I can show up in a healthy way. Yeah, I agree. My dog and I do our, our yoga morning stretch routine to a yeah. classical playlist. <laughs> I love it. Do you have pictures of your dog doing yoga with you? That's something I would never share. <laughs> <laughs> but she definitely looks forward. She, the music is soothing. Yeah. It's soothing for her. It's soothing for me. It gives us yeah. a good start to the day. Karen, I want to continue this conversation. I know our, our viewers are going to want to check out your shows. So where can they find you? Well, I like to say I'm everywhere. Uh, all you have to do is just look for my name, Karen Glasser. So if you go to social on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok, everywhere, it's Karen Glasser. If you go to YouTube, Karen Glasser. Um, and that's the best way to find me. You go to my website, karenglasser.com. If you want to get to know me a little better, they can reach out to me and make an appointment. I talk to everyone. They can go to connectwithkaren.com. And just come on and let's just have a conversation and, and see where you are in your world. It's not a sales call. It's nothing. I just like to get to know people. That's amazing. And what a generous offer. Because, yes, like I said, loving people and yeah. just, you know, doing it with love. You really are the perfect example of all those things. And as my friend, I love you. I'm so grateful to have you back on Good Day. And I'll look forward to um, our time on your show. Which is Absolutely. I can't wait. Can't wait. Thank you so Bye -bye. much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And we'll be